Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm gonna continuing this ninja hack to this HP this is actually a HP DC 7900 small form factor and this machine is not able to do any kind of overclocking and it's not able to do the Xeon mod where you take the core 2 processor out of here and put in a Xeon processor instead it's not compatible with that so this is a completely different ninja hack that we did in the last video I'll link that put that up here so you can go watch that if you are watching this one as the first one but I have a whole line of CPUs that I want to test in this last time I just started with the fastest one but I'm really curious to see how some of the slower one will perform here they are I have a 6300 an E5550 an E oh that's not an E that's just a 6600 a 6700 an E8400 and an E8500 made a little spot for each of them because I'm not gonna be removing the heat compound every time because I'm running out of heat compound it takes a month to get this one from China so I'm gonna be starting from the bottom one and I'm gonna put it in put some heating compound on and run a benchmark to see where we started out on these processes and then we're gonna apply the tape like we applied on this one you can actually see the socket pins has been pressing down on the tape so that's the plan so I'll start with this 6300 one. Oh, that's my needle I don't know do we call this heating compound or cooling compound mm. thermal compound This is a really bad computer for this test because this one has to be sc screwed on and unscrewed every bloody time. I don't want to be bothered with putting on the cover every time. That didn't work. It says that the microcode for the processor is wrong. I'm pretty sure that I have the latest version of microcode on this machine so probably they're not backwards compatible for this older processor but right down here we can actually still do a boot so let's see how that goes but it booted so let's um, let's run the speed test and it's gathering information about the system and it's ready I'm using a evaluation version of performance test 8.0 so test CPU all. Here are the results. It actually does 1657, which is pretty awesome. I think this one was rated of about 1100. And over here it says that it's an E6300. And down here the front side bus is 1.06 gigahertz. So we might be able to clock that a little bit when we put on the tape. We'll see. Okay, next processor is the E6550, a 2.33 gigahertz processor, and that one worked. Actually, the PC turned off the first time I turned it on, but I just tried again, and then it worked. So, let's test this, see how fast that is. Test all the CPU stuff. Here we are, we get a result of 1740. Let's check this one. Oh, we actually have a 1.33 gigahertz front side bus and it's running 2 gigahertz. I wouldn't expect that we would be able to get much more out of this. It looks very much like it's already running at uh, maximum speed, but well, we'll give that a try when we get so far. I'm gonna try the next one. Okay, here is the 6600, 2.4 gigahertz. It scores 1753 and it has a front side bus of 1.06 gigahertz. So this is probably one of the processors that is actually able to be clocked a little bit. 
The 6700 is also complaining about the micro coat, so was the 6600. I just forgot to say that, so booting that. Well, the 6700 is for some reason not doing very well here. It's actually the slowest processor that I've tested so far, and it shouldn't be there. Uh, the front side bus is 1.06 gigahertz. Let's see how that goes when we patch it with tape. Here's the E4800 and it scores uh, quite well, 2430 compared to the other processors that we've just seen. So let's make a note of that. Last processor for benchmarking and it scores 2441, which is not much more than the E8400. And it has a front side bus down here of 1.33 gigahertz. So um, not sure that we can do much for it, but let's see how that goes. Here are my test results so far. Uh, I don't know, I called the benchmark for BH for short because I got tired of writing down benchmark. 1657, 1740, 1753, 1625, 2430, 20. 2441. I have already started to put on the tape on these. Oops, that way. And I've already done the first four CPUs. So I'm gonna do the last two. So I'll just see if I can show you how I do this. I'm gonna take electric tape, preferable some kind of a pretty good quality one. I cut a strip like that. I take that strip off. Attach it to my finger. There. Take the CPU. Uh, let's see. Just want to make sure that I do this correctly. It has to go on the top here. So if I take it around, I have to put it on here. So I put that on that pin. Hold it down while I remove my finger. Take the scissors again. Cut off the extra and the piece of tape will be on the scissor and I can repeat. Like that. And this one is good to go. Ready for the next line of testing. Here are the results from the E6300. You can see down here that it's actually running 2 GHz, even though this is a 1. 86 gigahertz processor and it scores 1679. I just want to test that again. Uh, all. And it actually jumps up to 2.327 gigahertz. We do get some extra power out of this, even though the numbers are not that impressive. See if we get more the second time. Every time the processor has to do some hard work, it steps up from 2 gigahertz to 2.33 gigahertz. That's actually pretty nice. Nah, we'll use the first result, 1679. Here's the next processor, the E6550, and it scores 1764, which is actually a little bit less than the E6300. So apparently the E6300, we have made that better than this one. This one is also two gigahertz. Let's see if we run the test, what it now, uh, what it clocks the CPU to then. We need that one. And it looks like to be exactly the same thing. 2.33 gigahertz and we get an x7 out of that so apparently those two processors are very equal right now i'll see what the result that gives me a 
actually a little bit less. Might be because this little program is using some CPU power as well. Okay, here we have the E6600 and the Java update is available. Go away. And it scores 1780, which is a little bit better than before, but it's really not much. Let's just start the test again. And we can see down here, it doesn't really go up very much. It only goes up about 330 megahertz. So it's nowhere near the 3 gigahertz that the Q6600 goes up to. I'm gonna check the tape when I take this one out. Here is the E6700 and now it's performing. It's actually performing a bit better. It's benchmarking at 1770. I'm a bit interested because this is a 2.66 gigahertz processor. What does that throttle to? It also only goes up to about 2.4. This might be a microcode problem with this specific PC because both the E6700 and the E6600 came with the microcode error at the start. So that might be why I'm not able to overclock this because it only goes up to X7 where this processor should be able to go up to X10. The results might be a lot better on another PC. And here is the E8400 processor. It's a 3 gigahertz processor. We can see down here that the core speed is about 2 gigahertz, but it's already running at a, with a front side bus of 1.33 gigahertz. So it did not do anything. Well, it, it did a tiny little bit, but next to nothing. Last processor, when it's not doing anything, it's running at two gigahertz, and it should be able to go from a multiplier six times to 9.5. Um, it scores 2447 up here, which is ex more or less exactly the same as it scored before. And let's just see the test when we start that. Go over here. We can see that the multiplier only goes up to nine times, not nine, 9.5. So it only goes up to about three gigahertz. This computer is not the best one for this. I was curious if I might have gotten some dirt on the pins, but I can't see anything. It should be all good. So here are the results of my three hours waste of time. The 6300, which comes with an error on the micro code, was actually a little bit better. It went up from 1.86 gigahertz to 2.33 gigahertz. But well, the micro code error improved that all by itself. So I didn't really get anything out of that. Uh, the E 5550 uh, didn't change in frequency because it was already 2.33 gigahertz and it raised to 2.33 gigahertz. Same thing. There is a little bit of an improvement, but well, it might be the weather or something. Solar storms. Then there's the 6600 that had a microcode error uh, and it went from 2.4 gigahertz and down to 2.33 gigahertz. The improvement is so small and the frequency actually went down, so uh, I have no idea. It might also only have run 2.33 gigahertz without the tape. The 6700 over here, that probably the same thing. It might have been further down without the tape and was able to go up to 2.33 gigahertz with the tape because that actually improved uh, quite a bit on this machine. It also had a microcode error, but well, you actually do get over a hundred something benchmark points out of that. So it's actually worth taping this one or patching it. But the other two down here, well, that was a total waste of time. This one went from two gigahertz to three gigahertz and it improved like 12 benchmarking points, which is next to nothing. The last one actually went down, but the speed, the benchmark went up, but also, but the amount that it went up is next to nothing. So it's not really worth taking into account. The only processor that I tested and that was in the last video 
was this one, the Q6600, and that went up from 2.4 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz, and it benchmarked at 3,333, and it ended out at 4,113. So that was an improvement on 23%. All of these, well, it's not worth it in this computer. So this was more or less total waste of my time. The only thing I really got out of this was I actually found out that my graphics card was in a PCI X4 slot and I moved that over to a PCI X16 slot. Well, this Ninja trick wasn't really that great on these other six processors. It might work on a system where there is no micro code error for the processor and it doesn't really take very long to figure that out. You just run a benchmark before you start it, take out the processor, put on two pieces of tape put it back in and run the benchmark again and you don't need to mess too much with the heating compound to do that little stunt so well i wasted my time i hope i didn't waste yours too much i'll edit this down so you won't have wasted all the three hours that i've just wasted so please uh, Please like me for not wasting your time as much as I've wasted my time. So thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.